do a marking for an upper lip blepharoplasty. So the first thing I'll do is just have a look at the patient and see where the skin crease is and check that it's more or less in the same side in the same position. So please look down, okay, at a slight stretch, a little dab. Always ensure that you've dabbed it so your marking will not run. And I usually ask the patient to precipitate. Just hold this for me, madam. Okay. I'm just going to start. So the first thing I will do, keep looking down, down. Very good. Perfect. So just put a little mark. And I usually put, at this point, just little dots at their skin crease. And always, when you put some marks, dab away. Thank you. Now, at this point, I will just measure the distance. So if you look at the distance here, it measures roughly between 8 and 9 millimeters. Okay. Now, thank you. Just turn your head a little bit this way. Look down, okay. And again, thank you. So if you can't see the crease, just release a little bit so you'll see where the crease is. And again, we'll just mark a few dots. Okay, sure, thank you. Okay. Now, we'll just measure that again. Okay, and let's just see what that is. I think that's a little bit less, between seven and eight, so a millimeter difference. With that sh smaller difference, we will not change the position significantly. At this point, I'll just ask the patient, just look straight ahead, look straight at my pen, that's it, and make sure that your, cr your marks aren't in an abnormal position. So they're in a fairly good position. They're well hidden. Okay. So I'll accept that. So I'll just turn your head a little bit this way. Look down a fraction. So continue with the little marks. At this point, I'm just making a little dot. Thank you. All right. And then look, at, look over here. And then look again to see where it lies. It lies pretty good. Look down again. Now, you see this crease is coming down a bit. So we'll just make a little mark there. Okay. And then look at me. That's still okay. Sometimes you find the crease is coming down too much. If it is, you can change the position. But I think that'll be okay. Just look straight at my fingertip. Okay, look down again, my dear. So I'm going to move to this side again now. Just gently turn this way. Look down. Just dab for me, please. Thank you. Okay. And then continue with... Just going to release a little bit every so often to see that I'm still in the right position. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then look at me again, my dear. And just make sure the two balance. You see, now this one appears to be a little bit higher than that one. So what I will do is just ask, look down again, madam. That's why I didn't put a full mark on. I think what I will do in this case is to choose a slightly higher option. Dab, please. Okay. And look at me now, madam. So you can see the lower one, but you can't see the higher. Until I pull it up, you can't see the higher. So I will go for the higher option on this because you can see that the two are asymmetrical. The distance here was much smaller than the distance there. Look down, madam. You don't want to go too low. So I will accept that as my better position. So then I will, only then will I make a continuous line. The dots, I can change. The continuous line is what I'm going to cut on. Just turn there. So this portion we like. Down, please. Thank you. Okay. Just look at me again now. So you still can't see the upper one until I pull it. Can you see the difference between the two? So 
We'll accept that. Now, similarly, we'll do the other side. Gently close. That's it. Now open. Now look down, madam. We'll just dab again, please. Constantly dab, because once it runs, you won't get a good mark. So we like this as well. So we're going to take time and actually just mark that through. Just release that occasionally. Great. Well then. Look straight again, madam. So we like that bit. Now what we've got to make is a decision on the lateral bit. Now, if you look here, this point, look down again. Now, now if I choose this line, dab again, please. It's a, a little bit of a low line. You see how it's come all the way down. So I will not take that line. I should have dotted it, mind you, but never mind. So I will actually try to hit this line here as a continuation, probably. Let me just see. There are two options here, so it could be that option. Just. But you don't want your line to be so low. Turn again. And similarly, she has two lines here, so you've got a line there, and a line there. Dab, please. Okay. Look at my pen, madam. You know, I prefer the higher lines because I think it folds better. The alternative is to stretch it out. So what I'm going to do is just turn her head a little bit this way. Look down again. Okay. Now, if you're doing a lower lid blepharoplasty and your lower lid line is going to come up a little bit, there must be a five millimeter gap between your lower lid line and your upper lid line. So clearly, a lower lid line will clash with that one. If you're doing a lower lid, you should really go for a higher position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat in between this, because I don't, I think. Oh, I think that's a little too high. Dab, please. And then turn your head again this way, madam. And again, I'll just look at that and look down again. Oh, probably shouldn't do that. Dab, please. Okay, perfect. So we've created the lower line. I think prefer the right to the left just now. We can do a bit of alteration. Now, I'm going to pinch your skin a little bit. It shouldn't hurt too much. All I want you to do is gently close your eyes. Okay? So just lift the skin up. Put your forceps in the lower bit. Okay? Just keep your eyes closed, madam. Okay. And so see how much you can pinch easily. So that's a good pinch. And she can still close her eyes. Then turn it over a little bit and put a little dot. Okay? So there's a dot. And we'll just dab that. We'll do the same again. Now remember what it, it is possible to take more from the lateral than the medial end. So, and again, that, turn it over, and the dot. Thank you. The medial end, you have to be most conservative. So, I'm just going to lift up, pop it on that. So, I will be deliberately a little bit conservative, and then put a dot there. Okay. At this point, you should make a rough measurement. Okay. See, now that is almost tw 12 to 14 millimeters of skin. So remember we said that was about nine and that in the sub-brow, but she's actually plucked some of her brow hairs. So the brow hair is actually, this is the brow hair as it should be. Yeah, so... That is probably about 10, and we've got about 9 there, so we've got 19. But that's the highest that we could go. So just check one more time. Again, lift. And that. Okay. So that's just a little too much. So just would you dab for me again, please? 
where I put my final marks. Okay. Okay, madam, what I want you to do is open your eyes this time. Look all the way down to the floor, okay? All right, that's it. Now, remember, you can take this a little bit high. So, what I'm going to do is go a little bit high, but as I come in, I will be a bit more conservative. And then as I come immediately, I'll be even more conservative. Is the lighting okay with my assistant? Okay. Now, now that I've drawn that, I'm just going to have a final look to see that what I put in works. Okay, I'm being very conservative there. So, two options. I think I'll just do this. Okay. Down, please, thanks. Yeah, okay. Check one more time. Sorry, my dear, you're being very good. Very conservative. There's lots of ruck there. So just for my own sake, what I will often do is to just to remind me that I can take more from this direction. That's what I'll put down to say that I can go a little bit more in that area. Thank you. And then I'm conservative. And as I said yesterday, and I'll repeat this, so if you want to take more on the medial end, just think of a point in between the brow and the middle point of the brow and think of a line going straight down in that direction. Okay, and then you can take that section there and move that section across. So that point, you can move it that way. So it's effectively that. Okay. So that's the amount of skin that we can remove. So we'll repeat that when she's lying flat, because when she lies flat, her brow will move up a little bit. Now the brows descend a little bit. When the brow moves up that much, you need to make sure that she can still close her eyes when she's asleep and lying horizontal. And that's it. We'll make a last measurement of the skin. You should record this so we can say the skin creases nine millimeters. At a maximum point, we removed 11 millimeters of skin, and we have uh, another subbrow skin of 14 millimeters. So we've got 23 millimeters of 